Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick flying solo. So <laughs> the Warriors, they got smacked by the Bucks in Milwaukee, 128, 111. And the Warriors are still, what, like 2-12 and 12 on the road. And, you know, it's funny. It's funny because, like, I knew putting out an episode suggesting that the Warriors are, that the real Warriors have arrived and everything. I knew going into this, that it's going to be a very, very rough road trip. You're just hoping for effort and you're hoping to come back like three and three from a six game road trip right now. They're 0 and 1, right? And, uh, you know, in this one, they just never, never looked solid at all. Uh, From the first quarter, they looked disorganized uh, on offense, on defense, the only thing that held them together in the first quarter was the fact that Clay Thompson was hitting some big shots in the first quarter, and he started out hot. He cooled off immensely as the game went on, and you know, guys like Jordan Poole, man, <laughs> he just had one of those bad, bad Jordan Poole games. Playing at home, first time since that big contract. He was going for it, and he missed a bunch. He was forcing shots. He was doing all the bad Jordan Poole things, forcing shots, uh, being loosey-goosey with the ball, turnovers, making poor decisions on offense and on defense. And, you know, it, it was it was rough. It was rough. And then Steph couldn't get going. And so when you look at this Warriors team that didn't have, once again, Andrew Wiggins, their three guard lineup went 18 for 50 from the field. And then if you throw in Dante DiVincenzo, who I've been high on, uh, in this one, he only shot five for 15. So that is 23 for 65 from your four best guards. And that will never, (laughs) never cut it, not against. Uh, the Bucks on the road. And we know that uh, benches don't travel very well. And, you know, it was, it was rough all around. I won't just even put it on the bench. But the thing is, the contrast you can see between the Warriors bench and the Bucks bench, they, I mean, basically they have veteran talent that has either been in the system or, that, or has been in the league for a long time. Uh, Portis, Matthews, Connaughton, George Hill, all those dudes, they've played with Milwaukee and they've been in the league. So they know their roles and it's really just like a carryover of the system from previous years. And so they know what to do. I mean, we've seen this. We've seen this with the Warriors in the past. And that's part of the challenge, part of the challenge for this team. Just because we saw them play well in the Celtics game and for me, like seeing them and knowing where they can get to, uh, the fact that they kind of drop so low in this one, it's it's uh, disappointing, but, you know, it's part of the process. I said there are uh, three, four months to really, really get right. And that's just like leaving some, some runway uh, leading into the playoffs. So... I'm still optimistic, obviously. I'm not going to overreact to one game, but 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 there are still some of those bad signs, right? That they just can't turn it on on the road. And, you know, like against a team like Milwaukee, you saw the size deficit <laughs> that the Warriors have, especially with a team that runs out Giannis and uh, Brooke Lopez, and then can bring in somebody like Bobby Portis, who is actually a lot better than I remembered him being. But, you know, Michael Green off the bench, he didn't seem very effective at all. And, you know, the Warriors got beat in a lot of facets of the game. The only thing that kept them kind of close in the second quarter was all of a sudden they had like a, a bunch of three-pointers that went in and they hadn't been playing well. The Bucs got whatever they want, but they hit like three, four in a short span relatively. And that gave this sense that there was, it was closer than it was and that the Warriors could, it gave them a chance to maybe turn it on. But then at the end of the second quarter, the Bucs went on a run and I I think they, they got the lead from like six or something to like 12. And 
that's pretty much how it went. So the Warriors are back at 500. And uh, my buddy Aram in Toronto, he texted me during the game. He's like, you know, sometime in the third quarter, he was like, do you think they should sit the vets uh, at some point early just to save them for Indiana, which is, you know, the second night of the back-to-back? And I was like, yeah, you know, like – Eight minutes in the fourth quarter, if they're still down by 20, 25, then maybe they should definitely think about doing that. And that's kind of what they did around that range. And, um, yeah, you move on from it. It's a loss. It sucks. It stings. And I could just say it's one loss. You flush it. But we've had a lot of these flush it games this season, right? And uh, it's one loss, but it is still kind of similar to – other losses that they've had on the road. I'm not saying that all of a sudden they're going to wave a magic wand and get there, but it's going to take some work for sure, right? If you look at all the dynasty teams, it was always like moving forward, move forward. And then they became a dominant team. And then they had those two down years where, you know, we had D'Angelo Russell and everybody was injured. And then the play-in year where it was just Steph and, guys like Brad Wanamaker and Kelly Oubre Jr., uh, et cetera. And then there was last year, which was like a season that started off really strong. And then there were some, you know, iffy parts when guys went down like Draymond and then eventually Steph. And then the dog days were kind of rough. So, you know, this is a different experience, right? This is the first time in a long time that the three core dudes have been healthy and they've been sputtering this far into the season. So there's definite work to do. But again, like when I put out the previous episode about how optimistic I am for this team, you know, I knew that there was a good chance that they would lose some of these games coming up. It's unfortunate that they lost this badly. And you could see the frustration. Uh, they got like, well, like five technicals. I mean... <laughs> It just became a technical foul party and everything. And they never they never regained their composure. And I will I don't even know if they really had it to begin with in this one. They started off, like I said, a little scattered. And uh it seemed like the Bucks offense was really, really boat racing them for a while. So uh you know, I said like even if they do lose, it's really about how they show up. And this is not a good one. Definitely not a good one at all and i think they wanted to win you know it wasn't one where they were like lifeless and half assing it or something like that but they just were not overall good they were just out of it you know mentally they weren't focused or weren't tight they were distracted like i said frustrated all those things and there were some really really bad calls like the one where steph got he got the first technical for the warriors tonight he he got hit in the head on a three-pointer that he actually made and he went after the ref and got tacked up or got teed up. And then, and then Kerr being the good coach that he is, he got teed up right after and you hoped that maybe that would fire them up, but it, it did not. It was just a really, really strange game. And uh, it just shows you how much work they got to do plain and simple. You know what I mean? Like, that's it. That's it. And it's funny to me because, you know, like all this talk about, James Wiseman and, and, and all that jazz. It's like, <laughs> I personally, you know, people are like wondering like when Wiseman would potentially come back to the big league club, like for a stretch. And I was like, he's not coming back on the road trip. I said that like a while ago. And to me, that's because for one, he's not ready. They want that continuity of him just kind of getting consistent reps and developing his game, getting minutes and keeping his focus and his, uh, confidence up and everything and they were not going to bring him on the toughest road trip of the year where they could potentially take a bunch of l's that all of a sudden could be people would like point their fingers at like see you brought him back up and you went zero and six on the road they weren't going to do that and that's just that that combined with like the fact that he needs more more time but i do think that after this road stretch they are at home for a while and go back on the road again, I think maybe on the next home stand, you'll see a little bit of James Wiseman. That's what I'm predicting, hoping for. I don't know, just a hunch because you want to test him out and you also want to like 
showcase him a little bit, right? See what he can do. And you have to know, you have to know. And I think on a homestand like that would be the best time or else, you know, you're going to have to bring him back even further, further down the road. Patrick Baldwin playing in front of his home uh, crowd in Milwaukee. He played eight minutes, two for three from three. Those are all the only shots he took plus four, six points. That's great. That's nice. You know, Looney is also from Milwaukee. And, and of course, Poole, Jordan Poole was frustrating. You know, like every time he touched the ball, he tried to make something happen, but he would, it would slip out of his hand. I've talked about this and other people on YouTube have commented back to me. It's like unbalanced a lot of times. Like you don't see Steph with his moves to the basket. I know they got different shake and bake and all that other stuff and that their uh, method of madness of getting to the basket. They have their own things, but like you don't see Steph like dribbling super far <laughs> out of his body and then falling over or slipping you see that with Poole a lot, and it's it's frustrating. I think that he's got to tighten that up because for a guy who is who relies on being crafty to get to the basket, it just leads to so many unnecessary turnovers. You know what I mean? Turnovers where it's like you literally just lost the handle <laughs> and someone took it from you or it went out of bounds. Yeah, not a good game to watch. The Warriors, they really, really need this Indiana game on Wednesday, let's be honest, because you need that momentum and you need to feel good about yourselves after this one. And uh, Indiana, as surprisingly good as they are, you should be better than them. And they beat you in Chase Center in a game that was ridiculous, (laughs) right? Nemhard, Andrew Nemhard went off. So you better want revenge for that. You know, put Jonathan Kaminga on him every time Kaminga's in the game or something, you know, and and just lock him down or something like that. That guy should not be scoring that many points against you. So hopefully the Warriors can pull this one off. I anticipated that, that this would be a rough stretch, but it's just disappointing that uh, it, it was this ugly to start. You know what I mean? It doesn't change anything about my long-term prospects for this team. But, uh, you know, coming out of that Celtics game and going on this road trip, the good vibes, whatever, it's it's just a bummer. It doesn't define the season, but it's just – I mean, this blowout is kind of what people <laughs> expected at the hands of the Celtics, right? <laughs> but it didn't happen. And uh, I expected a closer game than this. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things too. The free throws – uh, the Warriors are 15 of 19 and the Bucks were 26 of 32. A discrepancy, but it was even a larger discrepancy than that from the start. 357, I wrote down. 357, the Warriors did not get their first free throw until 357 left in the second quarter. Now, yes, the Warriors are not the best at getting to the line, but that's also some weird refereeing <laughs> in my opinion. Right. And it was Looney went one for two from the line and that's it. And by that point, like the, the bucks had been to the line a bunch. And that's the thing I've talked about this and you know, you guys who watch the Warriors a lot, you know, that Steph does not get the calls that he should get, especially when other guys get them just a few years ago, he wasn't getting those calls and he started like trying to bait for calls and then they changed some of the rules. Right. Uh, but that was only because he wasn't getting them. And it's, it's frustrating because yeah, like that's easy four to six points. And that's a conservative estimate on how many free throws Steph could get. And again, it's about also getting into the bonus and we've seen games where like the Warriors, they foul and the other team gets into the bonus and it's just a parade to the free throw line. So those are things that they need to clean up and just tighten up and figure out. You know, and uh, I think I think that they will. And like I said, I still am highly optimistic for the rest of the season and not just again, if they have to make a move, they got to make a move. But this road thing, man, it's just a strange, strange inconsistency. And uh, it's too bad that it's such a, a rough run of games like road games in particular who they're playing against on this stretch. So I'm hoping for three and three right now. They're and one. Let's see. Let's see where it goes. You know what I mean? Like the Bucks, they've had a couple weird, tough losses. They lost to the Lakers, 
last week and they lost to the Rockets. So it is what it is. It's the regular season. It's December. And, uh, you know, just keep eyes on progress. I mean, hey, even though a lot of it was in garbage time, you like the competitiveness you see from Jonathan Kaminga, right? You just like his demeanor. Yes, he complains sometimes a little too much, but you see his his uh, his fire and that's that's awesome. You know, that's awesome to me because he wants to compete. He wants to win. And for all the Stephen A. Smiths and whomever that always questioned whether or not he worked hard enough or he cared enough, it's like, to me, that's never been a question. That's never been in doubt. You know, obviously I'm not in the facility or in practices or whatever in, <laughs> in any kind of team meetings or anything, but you could tell by his uh, demeanor on the court, how he carries himself when he didn't play before and how he does play and how he competes. So, you know, I'll take that as a positive as well. So, you know, we'll leave it at that. Anyway, quick turnaround for the Pacers on Wednesday. Fingers crossed that we get that one just just to, uh, you know, feel a little bit better and start turning some of these road L's into road wins. All right. 